that's why the, the, especially the French wine, uh, they also use predominantly vertical barrels. So you have to let it sort of sit in the for 15 years before you want to sort of drink it. Um, and the whole barrel selection is, is super interesting uh, because there, there are about five or nine different forests. Oh, in France? Yeah, nine, yeah. Nine. Um, And each forest, it's all also to do with terroir. Each forest also gives you a slightly different flavor profile on the, on the wine, on the wood. So we work very closely with our coopers, um, and then every couple of months, just before bottling, uh, just before uh, we, we uh, transfer the wine, barrels will sort of like sit with them and they taste the wine. And they, and they guide us also, sort of like what we, the end result that we would want, and they will steer away from this specific wood and go for something, you know, in, in that direction. Um, and, and it, but it's a costly, it's a costly check. I mean, a barrel costs us in dollars uh, anywhere between sort of a thousand and a thousand five hundred dollars a barrel. Um, you get two thousand Yeah, sixty gallon barrel. Yeah. You only use the one. You get sort of what three hundred liter barrel. You get four hundred bottles from that. Uh, and you use a barrel two or three times. Two or three times. Use that the third time where you've gone neutral. Yeah. That's, you can still use it, but you're not gonna, it's not going to impact any flavor on the, not as much as the first time. Talk about tannins a little bit. We just we just had we just tasted a wine that's medium minus tannin, so we're kind of stepping up a little bit in tannin, so they get a good understanding of maybe kind of where that comes from and where where do you think this wine sits. Right. Do you guys notice the difference in the in the tannins of this wine? Okay. Uh, well, tannins, you basically get tannins from three areas. You get it from the skin of the grape, the pit, and and the wood, the barrel itself. So when we when we crush the um, when the berries get crushed. You really want to either um, there, there are two ways. Either you can just when the, when the uh, grapes arrive at the cellar, you can uh, use a triage table. You can pick up all the berries. They can go into the fermentation tank, whole or crushed. Um, or you can uh, just hold the bunches as they are. You can just ferment the start to ferment it just like that with the stalks. The stalks then you also get uh, tannins on the stalks. But the risk there is that it can be like really green, leafy, vegetable kind of tannins that, that you get. Sometimes it works, for some varieties it works well, for others it doesn't. Uh, but what it does uh, is it, it adds a, a, almost like a, like a freshness to it um, that you get, especially from Euro European style wine, uh, if, if you use the sauce as well. But uh, predominantly winemakers would sort of like you know, crush the grapes, a very light crush because you don't want to squash the pips because then you get a very bitter tannin, which is, which is very unpleasant. unpleasant. Um, and then you, um, the rest of the extraction would, would come from, from, from the skin, like Cabernet Sauvignon, for example. Gee, big tannin. Why? Because it's got a, it's got a thick skin and, and very little flesh. That's why it's also regarded as one of the noble cultivars. Noble cultivars basically means small berries. The larger the berry, the less um, kind of fashionable, the lower on the food chain kind of would be. It's not such a special grape. The smaller berry that gives you real kind of intensity of, of color and tannin and, and fruit. And you always want the balance between your flesh and your skin ratio. So that's basically, and tannins are very important. Tannins are, uh, they act as a, uh, not only as a sort of like balance to the wine, but also as a, um, um, a natural uh, what is it, the, uh, uh, texture too. Yeah, it's all texture, but it's a preservative, metal, a preservative, a natural yeah. preservative. Yeah. Yeah. So when you when you drink the wine, uh, any wine, the, the easiest I think to, to check if the wine is balanced, do you take it, take it, if you, you swill it, and you smell it, and you and you take it a sip, think of a triangle, and you think of just fat. Fruit, acid, and tannins. And those three must always be in balance. So if the, if the wine is too tannic and there's not enough fruit, fruit to kind of support it, it's out of balance. If there's, if there's too much acid uh, or too little acid, it's, you know, the same thing, it's kind of out of balance. And, and tannins and, and acidity is very important. A 
acidity is kind of like the backbone for, for red and white wine, and then tannin gives like the, the structure and the fruit kind of like comes in between, and sort of like that's the marrying agent between the two. Question? How, how big is your uh, farm, and how much wine does that come to? Um, it, it, well, yeah, it was the vineyard. The, 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 the space, the space is about 700 acres. Uh, which we've got a 250 acre. Oh, you guys just moved to the metric system. <laughs> <laughs> you know? There's a disciple right here. <laughs> it's a way more advanced system, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's, it's 700 acres. We've got a 250 acre private nature reserve. Uh, we've got a, a, 100 and, a 205 acre vineyard. If you, if you translate that into bottles of wine, that would roughly give you about 70,000 cases of 12. Ooh. 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 Not that much, though. So, yeah. We, we produce... That's not a lot. That's not a lot. Yeah. That's not a lot. It's, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's seriously not a lot of wine. We produce... We sell... Uh, we sell... We use 60% of our grapes, and we sell... Um, uh, 40% of our grapes. So we produce uh, 25,000 cases of 12 wine because our our vineyards are much higher and the vines are much older. The older the vine becomes, the, the lower the less fruit it will produce, but the more intense fruit. So we like Chenin Blanc, for example. The, uh, let me put it in perspective. Stellenbosch, the, the, the average production uh, per year or tons per hectare would be uh, seven tons. Uh, if you go to on the other side of the mountain, British and the Sea Valley, that double, 14 tons. So they do a lot of bulk wine, but it's not really kind of intense. So it's done about seven tons. We produce like a Chenin Blanc, 50% of that, only three and a half tons per hectare. So it's really sort of like that intense kind of flavor that you get. Uh, so that it's always difficult to say, you, you've got to work on averages, like if you have the size of the vineyard, that on a, how much tons per hectare do you produce, so it's always a, it's a bit of a complex question. But yeah, that, that's roughly industry standard, is sort of seven tons per hectare um, is, is, is what you're going to get. Right, what other questions? What wines have you had so far? Where are you on the... That was the middle line. We're going to finish off with... Um one should have a little bit more tannins next. You guys can go ahead and try the last one if you'd like. That's a um, some Merlot from Washington State.